Jenner's his second season at the helm of the Badgers after being named a semifinalist for the Maxwell Coach of the Year Award last season, and guiding Wisconsin to nine victories and a berth in the Capital One Bowl. The Badgers return 11 starters from last season. Coach, go ahead and make an opening statement, then we'll take questions. Yeah, thank you. It's great to be here. Um, second year is always uh, a little bit cleaner. I think that will hold for our players, our coaches, and uh, our administration as far as we all understand each other. I'm proud of where the kids are. Just briefly through the football team, we uh, always stress three areas of success for our kids. I think academically, our kids are doing a tremendous job. Our goal is to get the football team to the 3.0 GPA. We're very close to achieving that. And, uh, excited about the opportunity to help those kids continually maintain and sustain greatness in the classroom. Socially, I think our kids are growing daily to uh, work themselves into manhood, and that's a big part of our job as coaches. Uh, but today we talked a lot about football, so we'll move on to football. Uh, this is a youthful team. They're exciting to watch work. Uh, they're exciting to be around. The youthfulness is uh, contagious now, and I think that starts even with our seniors, there's a lot of new faces that our seniors are challenging to get involved in the offense, the defense, and the special teams to be involved in our team. And as those young guys go in certain positions, our season will definitely follow. But the leadership has been outstanding. I'll point out a couple of young men from a leadership standpoint. Melvin Gordon has been unbelievable. Uh, Melvin is about team first in the position he's in, and we all know uh, how great a player he is. But, uh, he's even better young man and a leader for the young kids in our program. So proud of the way Melvin's handled that. And I would say Michael Caputo on the defensive side of the ball, the way that he's uh, involved himself with the youth uh, through this summer and last spring was so very, very important. So our leadership is in a good spot. I like where they're at offensively. Lots of questions. Uh, but the first question is not the offensive line. Those kids are all healthy. I feel great where they're sitting. Excited about the opportunity for them to get back and Hold themselves as a group. We look to have eight or nine deep oh, in position that. there. A couple young players will probably contend for some time there, but uh, we're prepared in a good spot with numbers and uh, with returning starters on the offensive line. So, the wide receivers is a big question mark. And it's been talked about a lot. We need a couple young men to step up. Some have been in our program and have been in our program for the years past. But Kenzel uh, and Jordan. Quite frankly, we need some help as far as moving ourselves forward. Alex Harris has done a nice job. He's back off his injury. But we have uh, Jazz TV, Robert Wheelwright, in our program a year ago. They need to be ready to uh, step up and play this year if we're going to be uh, a factor at the wide receiver position. We have some young men that came in. Three young men that are with us. I feel good about all three of them. Two of the three need to get on the airplane and uh, fly to the LSU game for us. So we'll see how that all boils down. The running back position. Obviously, Melvin is the running back, the tremendous running back, Corey Clement. is an unbelievable competitor. He wants the ball just as bad as Melvin does, so I love the competition there. Derek Watt, fullback spot. I feel very comfortable with him there. He'll also will play some tight end for us. Sam Lawrence starts the tight end position. Uh, we'll be good at tight end also. I feel good. So youth in the tight end spot. I feel good with their movement in the quarterback spot. It's, it's definitely a, it's an open competition. And excited to watch those kids compete, watch them develop defensively, a lot of new faces, uh, the front seven especially. Again, I go back to the youth, they're athletic, um, they're excited about the opportunity to compete in the Big Ten. We're going to see where they sit in camp, see if they can hang in there with our offensive line uh, from a physical standpoint in the fall camp. If they can do that, then we should be able to put together a pretty good defense. Uh, if they can't do that, then um, if you can't stop the run, we're going to have some struggles to move through, but I expect that they'll be able to get that done. Excited to watch them develop. Great competition for the defensive line position. Great competition at the linebacker spot. Excited about our corners. I think Darius Hillary and Soldier Shelton played very well last year and uh, should take a step forward again this year. So uh, the other safety position is wide open. But overall, I feel good about where we sit on offense and defense at this point. Special teams wise, we're going to turn a lot of uh, people. We'll have competition at all spots, from the snapper to the punter to the place kicker to the holder. Uh, but I feel we're moving in the right direction. We'll see when we get out on the field. Uh, the positive of the summer with being able to get the young men to spend a couple hours a week has been invaluable for the youth of our program, for the new kids that came in in the summer, for the development of 
and the seniors as they've gone through. It's, uh, it's a great rule change, in my opinion. And I think it will affect college football in a very positive way because these young men are walking in more prepared from a student standpoint. They understand their coach more than they did. Uh, obviously, probably would have spent time with him uh, outside of the recruiting process. So, uh, great opportunity this year for the Badgers. We're all proud to be part of this great conference. From there, I'll take questions. Go ahead and raise your hands at this time. We'll get a microphone over to you to ask questions. We have our first one. will be your stage right coach. Good morning, Coach Rexfield with uh, Bucky's fifth quarter. How, I guess, uh, lucky are you and the coaching staff to have, I guess, kind of an easier schedule? Uh, given that uh, you know this team is so useful, and on the other hand, how do you combat that? You, you know, do you have kind of, I guess, you know, the older players kind of take more younger players under their wing, or do you kind of have you know meetings to address that, or you know, how do you how do you deal with that? Uh, you know, first of all, I think the schedule is very challenging. People can say whatever they want about this or that, but uh, we've got a great schedule. It's highly competitive, and we're playing. Very good teams out of our schedule. Um, LSU is LSU, the best in the country, obviously, year in and year out. Bowling Green's picked to take their conference and was a great team last year, and then we get into the Big Ten. So there is no easy Big, there is no easy big Ten games. Anybody that thinks there is a sad mistake, and I'll debate that with you as much as you want to debate it because it's a better strap and I'm going to be ready every week in the Big Ten. Um, so as far as the schedule goes, I disagree that it is an easier schedule than what have you. It's a, my opinion. Uh, for the youth, one thing we are doing in camp is we will start out with two practices and we have the team split basically in half. It's not split, split by youth, it's not split uh, any other way than simply what's the best ability for us to practice. We're still in school for the first week in camp, so we'll have a morning practice, we'll have an afternoon practice, and then we'll go through our meetings in the afternoon. That allows youth to get reps. It's one thing to sit in the meeting room and uh, see it. It's another thing to be on the field and watch another player take on reps. But all of our players are going to get reps. Uh, there is no ones and twos in the first four days of camp. There's no threes and there's no fours. There's an A practice and a B practice and everybody will compete. They'll get reps, they'll put it out there, and it will allow the youth to be able to mix uh, in a very competitive situation with the uh, veterans of the team. Hopefully that allow the cream to rise to the top quicker. But our veterans are definitely challenging these young players to make sure that they're moving in the right direction physically and, and mentally. But ultimately, the kids are making the decisions that they make when they walk away from the facility. And I tell them all the time, I ask them the question, how much does it mean to you when you walk away from the facility? Uh, it means a lot to them. We're going to have a lot of freshmen be able to play uh, early on. But it's the mental part of this game at this level that you have to do to handle uh, from week one to week 10, 11, 12, and everything in between. That's the toughest part for you to handle. Stay in the group here on the aisle. Uh, coach, for those of us who don't follow the team or your team regularly, take us to the quarterback battle a little bit. Have you got a timetable for picking the start? Okay. Um, you know, Joel, and, Joel Scott and Aaron McAvoy will come in and split the reps. Those first four practices when we're split, obviously one's going to be a one in the morning, one's going to be a one in the afternoon. DJ Gillins will be in the middle of that uh, argument also as he comes in as a freshman, but he will not get as many reps as the first. Those first two young men, it's going to be interesting to watch. It was a great competitive battle in spring, even though Joel was very limited. I think in the summer it's going to continue to grow. The kids are handling very well amongst themselves, and they're also handling very well amongst the team. As far as the timeline, I really have no timeline. I've been through this a few times in my career, and it'll all settle out just like every position battle does. It's just a highlight of the quarterback position. Everyone wants to talk about it, and I understand it. I get that, but it's really no different than the battle that may be taking place at the wide receiver position or what have you. It's a, it works itself out. The kids of the team will understand it. The coaches will understand it. At that time, we'll make a statement that I'm starting quarterback. It may not be until we jog off the sidelines for the first snap at the LSU game. Room. Next question is all the way over here on stage, right, Coach? Yeah, Coach Anderson and Andy Collins, two Flat Town Badgers. Um, just wanted to ask you, 
with the youth coming in and the turnover on the defensive front seven, how do you expect, how different do you expect your defense to be scheme-wise compared to last year with, um, you know, kind of fitting new players into the system? We will be, uh, we're not as experienced, obviously, which is a concern. I believe we're athletic, we're tough-minded, we need to make uh, substantial gains in camp with our ability to consistently play with pad level, hands, technique, pre-snap awareness with the youth. I would say overall you'll see us move around a little bit more than we did last year. You'll see us play with more packages than we did last year. Last year we carried sometimes three different defensive packages into a game. This year with the ability of Vince Beagle, Jesse Hayes, Joe Schobert, um, some special pass rushers, Alan James, You'll see us build some pass rushing packages with uh, sometimes two corners, three corners, four corners in the game. Sometimes one safety, sometimes three safeties. But uh, we'll be more multiple, um, and that allows to be what will look like we'll be more aggressive and with some more athletes on the field in certain situations. Floor is open right now. Go ahead and raise your hand if you have a question. We have one stage left, coach, toward the back of the room in the middle. After losing Jared Abrederis, how do you address the wide receiver position? Well, you, just like I talked about earlier, the challenge is going to be by those numbers I discussed earlier, we have to replace Jared with two or three players. Now, there's some young men in that program. Wisconsin football means a lot to them. Zell Doe's had an unbelievable offseason, very good spring, became dynamic at the end of the year in the return game. Uh, he'll be a presence for us in that situation. Jordan Frederick has had his role. Alex Erickson has had his role. The challenge is for the youth to step up. If those kids that are in the program and have experience in wide receiver have made the strides I believe they've made, and we can have three of those five youthful kids that I talked about, the ones in the program and the ones that are the student program, we can replace Jared uh, by numbers. But we're not going to have Jared out there at this point. Somebody's going to have to uh, catch a lot of balls and do a lot of special things to be put in that. Uh, Touched. Stay on that side of the room, Coach. Hey, Coach. Teddy Green, from the Chicago Tribune. How, how good of an athlete is Tanner Rappaport? Tanner's a great athlete. I think anytime you look at a young man that is a quarterback and has never really played safety in his life, breaks his hand in camp, turns around, learns the scheme, understands it. He's very smart, he's intelligent. Uh, he had to learn how to tackle in a couple week period. It got better and better as the year went on. I would say he is a, he's an elite athlete. The way he moves around, his size, his ability to speed he runs with, I think he runs very, very well. He's elusive, he's smart. He's got the ball in his hands. So he's, a, he's a very talented athlete. Allows you to do some things offensively to force defenses to understand that if you make a mistake, he's more than willing to take off and make you pay. Time for one or two more questions. Again, the floor is open. Go ahead and raise your hand. We'll get a microphone over to you right now. We have one here, safe right coach. Coach, how do you handle the expectations of being favored uh, to win the West Division recently by uh, Cleveland.com? Uh, you know, first I heard of that was when we got here last night, so we're not worried about any of those expectations where we're sitting. We have high expectations for ourselves. I think this football team was set down and they'll write up their goals here when we report on Sunday and give us an idea of what their vision is and what their care factor and want to is for the season, which will be high. And we'll worry about what we can worry about. But, you know, we're, again, it's the Big Ten. It's Wisconsin. The expectations are always high. You're expected to do things well off the field. You're expected to do things well on the field. So the fact that somebody says you may be first, second, third, fourth, fifth, or sixth um, really has no bearing on where we sit as football. Good time for one more question. Okay.
Thanks very much, Coach. Go Badgers. Almost